Welcome to Between Over and Next with your hosts, Holly and Robert, a happily married couple who explore the space between what was, what is, and what's to come. From career changes to navigating life's uncertainties, this dynamic duo will empower you to live your happiest life at every age and stage. So get ready because your journey with Holly and Robert starts now. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Between Over and Next. Hi, Holly. Hi, Robert. Today's episode is all about sandwiches. Okay. <laughs> What's your favorite sandwich? What's my favorite sandwich? The one that's in front of me when I'm eating it. I have a few favorite sandwiches. I like the Italian, an Italian sub. I like a chicken cutlet sub. Hero. Yeah, those are my two favorites. Well, when I was preparing for this episode, I was thinking about sandwiches. Uh And because we're going to be talking about a very unique life stage experience that we are part of right now because we're in the middle. And a sandwich usually is, in its most basic form, Mm -hmm. two pieces of bread with something in between. So the first sandwich that came to mind is one of my absolute favorites is a delicious grilled cheese. I think you make the most delicious grilled cheese. And it is gooey in the middle and kind of that's life is gooey in the middle. And there's all different kinds of cheeses that you could opt to use. But then as I continue to prepare for this episode, I'm thinking not just about a classic sandwich. I'm thinking about the panini. Because that's pressed sandwich. I don't know if it's cultural in terms of the term sandwich, the way you described it. Because I don't know if you remember, but there was, well, you probably remember this. There was a point in time where we were trying to reduce carb intake. And we bought the bread. Was it no carb bread? (laughs) <laughs> was was that, I think it was a no-carb bread. Oh, yeah, yeah, like Umi, Udi, Udi, you know, whatever brand yeah. it was, right? Yes, and, we were. And I called the company with a complaint about the bread because they sold this package of bread with five slices. <laughs> and I couldn't understand why a company would put out bread for sandwiches with an odd number of slices. I think this was like 15 years ago? (laughs) Probably, but I reached out to the company, which turns out was a Scandinavian company. And they told me that the reason why there was an odd number of slices of bread in this package was because they made open face sandwiches. And the evenness of the slices didn't matter. So I'm wondering, because when you're using the term sandwich generation is a new term to me. When you started to bring it up as us in the sandwich generation was really kind of the first time that it was on my radar as who we are. The first time I thought about it was when I was sisterhood president of Temple Emmanuel. And that's the first time I felt in between the families with young children Mm -hmm. and the senior members of the congregation. And it's very relatable and relevant to today's episode because I learned so much from both groups. Well, because it was really one of the first times that we were Exposed. exposed to a group of a range of ages right a a third of those people were significantly older than us and it was the time our children were teenagers tweens to teenagers to now they were between 10 and 16 or so so there were different ages and stages and different opportunities to connect with people of all different ages so the definition of the term sandwich generation refers to a group of adults 
typically in their 40s to 60s, who find themselves caring for both their aging parents and their children. These individuals are metaphorically sandwiched between two generations, often pulled in multiple directions between work, personal needs, and the demands of family. The word that popped out to me in that definition is family, first and foremost. But the other word that pops out to me is the caring for. Mm -hmm. We are very blessed to have four parents in their 80s. They range from 82 to 86, our parents. Right. Right now, our children are 28 and 30, and we are 61 and 62. Mm -hmm. So there are three generations. We are that unique position of being the connector right, between our parents and our children. And we're learning a lot, like right now, more than ever before, about what was when we were younger, Mm -hmm. when we were our children's age, when we first got married, that's how old we were, when we raised our children to this moment in time as a happily married couple and what our dreams are. And looking at our parents and the decisions and choices they made along the way and what they're experiencing right now. And I think the thing that we're realizing the most is how important health is. Yes. And I think that we are lucky in the sense that when we were raising our children, when they needed us most, our parents were relatively healthy and they didn't require very much attention in terms of being cared for because they could care for themselves. Other people are not necessarily as fortunate. Their parents may be older, so their caring for them, their sandwich may come a little bit earlier with some younger kids and more stressed because their younger kids require more hands-on caring for while still caring for parents. And we had friends that were going through that at that point. Now our children are young adults and there was just a report that came out and I forget what it was tied to, but they were trying to determine when you become an adult. Like when are you grown up? And they put a marker out like as of today in 2024, the fall of 2024, if you were born before 1997, you're considered an adult. Like you're considered grown up, right? So that puts you at about 30, right? 27 to 30 years old, right? That range. Our children, our kids age. Of when you're considered a grown up. And it's when we got married too. I mean, that is the age. Right. And it's interesting because if you think about it, you're... Children can stay on your health insurance plan until they're 26. And that number has gone up. I believe that a number of years ago, that was at 23. You could stay on your parents' health plan. And I think it was modified. So now, until you turn 27, so while you're 26, I believe, you can still be on your parents' health plan. Right? You think about it. Really, until someone reaches their late 20s, early 30s, they could still be dependent and beyond that of their parents. They become less dependent and your parents become more dependent. So your shift of caring for, while we still care for our children, they're okay on a day-to-day basis. They can feed themselves, they do laundry, they go to work, they come home. But parents now, that shift may require more attention than they did in the past. And I guess that's good in a way that your children become less, you know, hopefully day-to-day hands-on, and your parents may become more day-to-day hands-on. That's so true. Let's reflect a little bit because when we think about our parents, like when our parents were in the sandwich, it was very different. Okay. I, don't, I don't even think that that concept, that's what I'm saying, that concept of defining that role, I think only in recent years, recent decades, 
has the family structure changed? We saw it more in Livingston than we see it here because of the cultural differences. Multi-generations living under one roof. Grandparents living in the same house, right? Your parents living with you, having them in the house, and both for caring for and then for them helping to care for children. But I think that's the norm in most of the world. I think just in the United States, that becomes less common, and it's probably more common in certain parts of the United States, where the multi-generations are under one roof so that they care for one another. I also think we're living a little longer. I also think that the care system has changed, right? Like there may have always been nursing homes, but now there's more assisted living and independent living than ever before because of lifestyle. Right. You don't want to give up your independence. I forget who we were just talking to that just said that their father turned 90. He kind of gave up his driving privileges. He didn't feel safe behind the wheel. And that's true for a lot of people. My night vision's not as good as it was at 62, as it was at 32, which makes sense. I mean, that changes over time. But we think about it, a 90-year-old who's been driving and independent now becomes dependent. So that becomes another obligation that falls to the caregiver. But if you think about it, you can pass some of that on to your children, right? So if your parents, let's say, were living nearby and they needed to go to the doctor, one of the extended family could do that if they were nearby and should do that if they're able to. As long as you have a good relationship, it becomes, I don't want to use the word obligation, but it's kind of what you should be doing. You should be helping those who helped you. But there are more benefits to that, too. Remember when we watched The Blue Zones? I highly recommend this documentary series. They... Showed yeah. Being the- with family had a positive effect on one's health, whatever that translated to. Being with family and it brought more in general and joy. was a positive thing and it added years to your life. So we are experiencing right now a significant life pivot. Life is full of pivots. Being in the middle of aging parents and adult children it is a time to think about what was, what is, and what's to come. And we are in the age of transition. We are watching it, like what we want for ourselves for the next 20 plus years and what we want for our children for the next 20, 40 years. Or hope that they'll follow in a certain direction. But as we've seen, with us and our friends. When you become an adult, you have your own hopes and dreams and desires and all of that, and that may translate into travel and living in other places, which prevents caring for, or that shifts and changes. So time spent together becomes Zoom sessions and being able to spend time with family. Which we should be very grateful for, to have that technology, to to be able to connect. Because I will tell you, my parents moved to Florida, what, 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. And they were always nearby until our kids were teenagers. And I miss them a lot, a lot. Long distance relationships are challenging, are hard, are are, different. um, Different. So your parents are more nearby and your family is more nearby. But think about that. They're 45 minutes away, 45 minutes to an hour, depending on the day of the week and the time of the day. My parents. parents. That doesn't mean we would see them every day. That's impossible. You, you know, you can't, you know, build in. If you had to, you would. Right. But that's a challenge that becomes difficult. So. You, you fill in those gaps with phone calls. You fill in those gaps with text messages, the occasional Zoom call or FaceTime. You see people all the time on their phones FaceTiming, seeing what's going on, right, bringing people closer. I think technology has helped a lot of relationships. I think it's helped rekindle relationships. I think it's helped sustain relationships, but we, deepen relationships. But we were happy when we were 
young parents raising our children that for the most part, our parents were within an hour. Yes, to, and, and I, I, that's how there. I grew up. We had moved to Staten Island, and my grandparents still lived in Brooklyn. That was a 45-minute ride from Staten Island to Brooklyn. We did it every day. But I'm We happy. would go to Brooklyn every day to my grandmother's Which house. Which is my a gift. House. It's a gift. I'm really happy our children live near us. And that is by choice. Yes, and beyond the ability to see them and spend time with them. And be spontaneous like we did last right. night, going out for but dinner it's with the also, kids. But it's also been helpful to us yes. to have them nearby. Yes, and, we're, we're and realizing we've that. we've depended on them, whether it's for a ride somewhere or can you come to the house and do this. But wait, or, think about how much Lindsay you know, helped pick, us move. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And it was a, a, wow. a group effort in that regard. I will not deny that it's easier to have the kids nearby and listen if your loved ones can be to you in an hour that's nearby that's not around the corner that's not i'm going to run over for five minutes and come back but that's certainly a there and back in a few hours kind of proposition that is something that i am grateful for because it has helped enhance our lives and made it easier and made it more rewarding to to have them nearby. And as our nuclear family changes and grows, that gratitude will increase. We'll see and experience things because we are in close proximity. Listen, there are fractured families all over this planet that live around the corner from one another and don't see each other. And we are guilty of that as well. We have family that is cl in close proximity that we just don't have a relationship with. And that's unfortunate, but it's the fact of the matter. That's the way life has transitioned us. It's never too late to rekindle relationships, right? It's only one time is too late, right? When you hear that nail going in the coffin, that's it. But beyond that, relationships can be rekindled if people are willing to do that. But all parties need to be a part of that. But being able to keep families intact I think is something that people should strive for when possible because I think it only benefits you if it's good and it works. I think that each party, meaning the adult children and the parents and us, all need to figure out what our roles are because they're being redefined every day, every decade <laughs> because there's some letting go that's involved as your children are making their own decisions for their lives, their relationships, their careers, their lifestyles. It's not one size fits all. You and I have been role models to our children. Our parents are proud of us for how we show up in the world, but we're not the same people that we were when we first became parents. You used to say to me when we first got married that I didn't leave the nest because of my close relationship with my parents. Mm -hmm. But I have the same relationship today. But there have been transitions over time. Right. And you have a similar relationship with Lindsay. I do. Right. Who sometimes needs your help picking out the color crayon she wants to use. Yes. <laughs> yes. She likes affirmation and guidance and you know what i'm okay with that and you know what sometimes i go to my mother and i want some guidance i used to ask my mother for more advice when i was younger i feel now more confident secure comfortable in my decisions now mm -hmm. because i've been empowered through their parenting through our relationship as parents of how, what we want to provide to all family members, I, I feel I feel good at this stage and age. And we do talk about the pivot a lot. And as a parent of younger children, you go, 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 do, 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 pick up, you know, bring them here, bring them there. Their list of things to do is the priority. Right? You're fulfilling obligations. And now we're kind of 
finding the peace in the present moment. We are so hyper aware of that. And just the value of being with loved ones, that matters to us so much. These moments are the heart of this in-between sandwich phase. And when you get to this age, you will understand what I'm saying. But the sooner you realize it, the sooner you can treasure it and value it. One of our episodes is we're talking about our core values, Robert. You said a quote that I also have a blog article about. What's the quote? Yes. One day your life will flash before your eyes and make sure it's a story worth telling. So that quote inspired us to elaborate on that, meaning time. We say this all the time, that time is fleeting. I I looked up more about time, and we have 86,400 seconds a day. We invite you to be inspired and motivated to share and spend some time with us because our episodes are anywhere from, on an average, a half hour to 45 minutes, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So that's a little over 2,000 of those 86,000 seconds. Right. Isn't that a good way to put it? It is. It is. But unless you're faced with some life-altering event as a young person, you do not value time the way you value time as an older person. You do not. As a 30-year-old, you're invincible. Aging is not even on your horizon. So you can't even absorb that. And it's not until, I think, for us, we didn't start to feel any different until the kids started to go to college and they're away and then our family dynamic changed and Alex became the only child for a period of time. And then Alex went away and then Lindsay came home and did her last year at at MSU and she lived home and then she was the only child again. And then she moved in with Elliot and got married and then Alex moved home again during COVID and we became three again. And these family dynamics change and evolve and his dependence on us during COVID at home being that really couldn't go out and do and whatever it was really the three of us that was probably as close living right where it wasn't oh Alex is is out for the day or whatever and they were like 10 or 12 you know where they were all the time COVID impacted lots of families of all ages I mean think about the little ones that didn't get to see their grandparents or have their birthday parties or you know there were so many things that happened during COVID that impacted families that you couldn't help realize the importance of family and being there for each other but there are so many common experiences that we have and so many emotions that we're coping with So many mixed feelings of being in the middle. And at its its core, there's happy and sad. We have friends that have lost parents or spouses. That changes life so much. Mm -hmm. We have friends that do make sure that they are with their parents as much as they can be to be there for them. Whether it just be to have some social time together. Or move them into your house, or, or, you know, permanently or for a temporary sure, time. Just to make sure they're okay. But we are witnessing our parents' aging process, and especially with health issues. And diminished Side- ability to do things on their own. That's really what it comes down to, but, is that they can't get to the store the way they used to be able to get to the store. They need help going to doctor's appointments, things like that. I always said, you go, come into the world and you go out of the world the same way. You come into the world as a baby needing your parents' attention, your caregiver's attention. You cannot survive on your own. And then when you get older, the same thing happens. You need care. You can't get through the day without someone taking care of you. But, so you're leaving the same way you came in. There's no way around but, that. But think about this. While we're witnessing our parents aging and their health issues, no matter how positive they are, which they are, all of our parents are very positive about their days. Yeah. Right? With their spouses, which is such a beautiful thing. We have not experienced much loss. Knock on wood is a blessing. And but this is happening at the exact same time as our 
kids are like so happy, Robert. They're just celebrating everything. So many milestones. And they love their grandparents, but they don't want to be pulled down by the daily challenges that our parents may be having or even what we may be having. So it's a very unique emotional space because it could feel overwhelming yet rewarding, right? That middle space. And there were feelings of duty, of stress, of guilt. Sometimes you don't feel like you can give 100% to everyone who needs your support. Well, I mean, how could you? You can't care for other people if you're not okay. So you that's know, important. So, so Self-care without, is important. Without you being okay, right? Without the caregiver of, let's say, a sick family member, that caregiver's got to get sleep and nourishment and fresh air because if they don't, they're not going to be able to, to provide adequate care for who they need to care for. But at the same time, not only are we seeing what's going on with our parents and we care so much, we love them so much, we don't want to overstep with our adult children. <laughs> Parenting evolves uh, as our children grow into adults and we offer them the guidance, but we have to allow them to be independent. And they are making significant life decisions about their relationships, about their money, about their family, their jobs, their own health, their pet's health. So it's really important to manage expectations. First and foremost, it's so important to have open communication. And you know what? You also have to sometimes say no with love to keep you grounded and energized because you can't just say yes to everything. You can try to do as much as you can and want, but you have to balance your needs without overextending. And that's that's hard to do. Yeah, and a lot of people don't know how to do that. And if they're caring for someone, it is all in and quite often other family members will suffer because of that because someone is so devoted to caring for a loved one that they're almost blinded by what else is happening around them yes it's extremely important to be able to be there to care for loved ones but you're caring for healthy people as well quite often you see that happen that there's such a shift in attention to a family member because of illness that the rest of the family suffers because of that well, as often, well. Well, often things are put on hold. Sure, sure. Because of the that, priority I mean, is given to the person that needs the most attention, hopefully. That's what happens. But that can't go on forever. So certainly you hope that maybe other family members can pitch in siblings or it, extended family think, to help out. It's I sometimes a group effort. You can't be too proud to ask for help. It very often takes a village. Not everybody can do it all. So whether it be family members or professionals, you should ask for help when you need it. And there always has to be clear, honest conversations with all generations. Everybody's got to be on the same page. Which isn't always possible, but you can strive you can for that. You can try. And I just want to touch on it slightly because this is something we're in the midst of recognizing and acknowledging and becoming more aware of is the financial pressure part, mm. planning for the future. And we are all products of our family and the way they do things. And then we are pretty savvy people of exploring what will make sense for us and our family. But being sandwiched in the middle, you're kind of watching what your kids do and you're watching what your parents do. When you do think about perhaps medical bills or long-term care costs, these are all things that you just have to think about. Yeah, and I think for a lot of people, us included, sometimes you get that information on planning for the future too late or later than you would have liked to have been exposed to that. But nevertheless, people are kind of presented with a certain situation and need to deal with that, whether it's becoming more dependent on family members, whether it's becoming more dependent on government assistance. Not uncommon for people to run out of money. 
happens so much more than people want to believe that it happens. Some countries, it's not an issue. They care for the elderly, and that all becomes part of the landscape. But in the United States, there is assistance. There's help with medical insurance as you get older. Medical care as you get older is, makes sense. But that financial planning for your aging part of your life is probably a very low percentage of people actually prepare for that the way they should and become more dependent on family I than just, maybe they should. I just think it's something that we know now that is something that we have to address. I did not think about that 10 mm-hmm. or 20 years ago. I didn't. That's why we talked about planning for retirement with our kids so early on and had them start retirement plans in their 20s. I didn't start my, my retirement plan until I was well into my 30s. You know, that's well, a big difference. Yes. That's a big, big and difference. And that was really good parental guidance. So let's embrace the positives of the sandwich generation. Creating multi-generational memories and having family gatherings and making time, again, that word time, to have fun times, good times, to intentionally get together, whether it just be for dinner. Like I said earlier, we had dinner with the kids last night, and it's so nice. We come home and we send some beautiful texts saying we had a good time, Mm -hmm. and thank you. Mm -hmm. When we have our holidays under one roof, there is so much joy. I got to hear yesterday from my mother how long it took her to make the chicken soup. Yes, and she's on to the the upcoming holidays. And the brisket's next. And her mandel bread. That's a tradition. Lindsay has her, you should do a shout out, okay? What is her block called? Baked goods. What is Lindsay's? Need to nosh. Okay. I'm going to include a link to Lindsay's blog because it is about legacy in our world. And she's an amazing baker and cook like her father and grandmother. And she started this blog and she is going to continue sharing the recipes that your mother has enjoyed cooking for so many years. Yeah. People love to eat and holidays are centered around the dining room table that food and tradition tied to food is quite common and passing along recipes is an amazing way to honor generations through food but what usually falls to just a couple of people in a family that continue right that. that continue the traditions different traditions may fall to different family members whether it's a certain assigned holiday that you host or you go away to a certain place together as a family on a particular holiday, you have to build those traditions that will hopefully carry on. Well, right? That's tra- what a tradition is. Yeah. But- if it's not a tradition, it's just a thing. It's just a one-off. So you're either creating a tradition or you're not. We have a few friends that have continued baking their grandparents' or parents' recipes, Mm -hmm. that they continued their legacy, and we've enjoyed a lot of those yummy baked goods as well. But on top of that, when we think about how we have brought the grandkids and the grandparents together with intention, we have so much joy watching that relationship blossom, and especially when our kids were younger, when we went to Avon by the Sea those summers, whether it was playing bocce, playing dominoes, playing Remy Cube, in, in later years, we played May I and Uno with my parents. It was so many good times, mm-hmm. so many laughs. And uh, you cannot discount the power of family gatherings. And another positive is seeing the world through new eyes, watching your parents or an older generation age gracefully. Your parents play golf regularly, Robert. That's wonderful. Yeah, I think that growing old is, is mobile. Good. Growing old is good. Yeah, is right. As long as you're healthy. That's the caveat. Struggling with health issues, some are avoidable, some are not. But struggling with health issues is something that's very, very difficult. But I think a lot of health is tied to movement. And I think once we stop moving is when we get old. 
When I say seeing the world through new eyes, I'm really talking about a lot of what we learn from our kids. They definitely keep us on our toes, our kids. Especially if you look on Instagram or TikTok these days, you see what's going on with the latest trends and ideas. Elliot and Alex have introduced a few exotic fruits to us, and they love their rock climbing, and I tried it, and it's not for me. <laughs> but when you see the joy through them, it kind of keeps you young at heart, Robert. Yeah. If you're paying attention, that's really what I think part of the problem is that we only focus on what's ahead instead of focusing on the moment and it's what we talk about here on between over and next is that being in the moment appreciating what you have right at that moment not worrying about what tomorrow is going to bring let's take care of today let's base what we do today on what we know from yesterday so that we're not necessarily making the same mistakes over and over again or that we're looking back on the moments that make us happiest and we're repeating those moments, but it's about paying attention to what was, living in the moment, and hoping that what you're doing at that moment will bring you what you want in the future, now, right, of what's next. It's the wisdom to embrace the transitions and to blend the old and the new and to grow together and to evolve together emotionally and spiritually to become more patient, adaptable, empathetic, and resilient because all of those qualities will serve you for the next chapters of life. And let's continue to understand our parents' needs and our children's desires. And that will lead to deeper connections with both generations. Be grateful for having meaningful relationships with both generations, the challenges are real, but the rewards, like the love and the laughter and the lessons, are priceless. This pivot is about finding the meaning of the in-between and preparing for the exciting unknown ahead, envisioning what comes next for you personally, your dreams, your adventures, and what's next. You have to continue to learn. With knowledge comes growth. And I think that's really what you should strive for at any stage of life that you are. I think what happens a lot of the times with people as they age is they stop doing things when they should continue and do more things. That's really what Holly and I are concentrating on now is bringing more into our lives that add to it and we're fortunate that we're able to kind of zero in on those things we've identified the things that make us happy and we continuously move in that direction and try not to let the distractions slow us down and we're successful most of the time but we're excited about where we're headed and we're excited about the changes that are coming our way because the pivots that we're going to undertake over the coming months are ones that are brand new to us as a family and quite familiar in the same sense. So it's going to be a really exciting time for us as sexagenarians as we move into new roles that feel familiar, but are going to feel very different as well. And that's a very exciting thing. So I'm looking forward to that. And I'm looking forward to continuing to share with others what we've learned and hopefully uh, be able to help you and in hopes that you will all help others in the same way to be able to share your wisdom and what you know and how you've all changed and grown over time, that is very valuable information and should and needs to be shared with others so that they can take maybe a better path than we have all taken and make it a little bit smoother, smooth out some of those bumps. And that only comes with foresight 
and only someone with hindsight can give you foresight. Well, that was a great sandwich. I am full. <laughs> and I look forward to our next sandwich together. Yes, absolutely. So thank you all for being a part of our audience here on Between Over and Next. And we will see you next time. Thanks for tuning in to Between Over and Next. We hope you enjoyed this episode and found it meaningful and insightful. If you value it to be worthwhile, please share it with your friends and family. We would really appreciate it if you could take a moment to write a review for us. Your feedback will help us continue to create content that resonates with you. And don't forget, in the show notes, you can find all the relevant links mentioned in this episode, from accessing free downloads to visiting our website and more. If you have any questions or comments, we would love to hear from you. Simply send us an email. Our email address is hello at hollyandrobert.com. We're always excited to connect with our listeners. So until next time, thank you again for joining us on Between Over and Next. Thank you for listening to Between Over and Next, the podcast that navigates the twists and turns of life with courage, laughter, and a whole lot of inspiration. Tune in every Tuesday to hang out with Holly and Robert on your favorite podcast platform. Visit hollyandrobert.com and follow them on social media to ignite your passion and fuel your dreams.